Hey folks, it's Frithgar here, how you doing? Welcome back to Farming Simulator 22 here in the pristine, untouched wilderness of the Calm Lands. Maybe uh, that would be a better way of doing it. This one, I can pick this one up. Look at that. See? I'm big and strong now. Look at me. And yes, I have had people saying about that weight there. Why don't I sell the weight? Why don't you sell the weight, Frith? Frith, you've got that weight out there. You can sell that one. Frith, you know you've got that weight there. You can sell that. You keep saying that you want money. Why don't you sell the weight, Frith? Because it's worthless. Look, I will show you. I will show you so we can put this argument here. 422. I mean, really, it's not worth it. And we're going to want the front weight later on. Okay? It is something that we're going to want. So that's why I'm not doing it. I hope I've cleared up all of the questions that you may have had. Now then, next step. We want to hook in this trailer, like so, and we want to go racing off. Ooh, wait. Do I want to get pig food? How much food have we got? I have actually got room to get some pig food, so I could take the other trailer, except that I can't put pig bags in that trailer. It doesn't work. It's not an option. Right, okay. Forget that idea. It's not happening. And now I want to reverse up here. I am seriously considering selling the front loader and stuff. Because it has been pointed out that the pallets that we're shifting around, we could be doing by hand. Um, yes, admittedly, the grain pallets are going to be a little bit more difficult to shift by hand. But they could still be done. You could still be handballing them. We've got fairly low amounts of them as well. So, again, it could actually be a thing that we're moving them by hand. Which means that we could go and sell that little collection there. Now, that little collection... Front loader tools... Really? The log grab is 500. The pallet fork is a grand. I did not see that coming. I thought that would have been the other way around. And the front loader itself is another 6,700. Now, the reason that I've been keeping it is because I kind of don't feel like I should be getting rid of the means that I've got of picking stuff up and moving it around. Even though I don't currently have a front loader attachment on either of my tractors. We're just ignoring that bit and... Um, we're not talking about that bit. Um, like here, I'm unloading these in a way that I have actually done. Only once. I did only do it once, admittedly, but it still happened. It was still a thing. What we did was we put rope up over a sturdy beam. And I'll be honest with you, that looks like a sturdy beam. Take a look at the size of that beam up there. That is a sturdy beam. There is no question about it. And we're not... It's not like we're swinging it from the middle either. So we haven't got, like, a, a lot of pressure on here. We're putting the rope over here. So what we do is you put the rope over here. And you, you have a, a set of pulleys and um, so on. So you have a rope over that bit with a, a pulley. Well, actually, we greased up the beam on the top. Um, we just greased that bit. And then we had the pulleys down over here. And we basically made a miniature crane. And we tied the rope around that one. And then we hauled on our miniature crane over here. We had like five pulleys, I think. So what you do with a... a well, you, you start off with a double pulley system, essentially. So what happens is the rope would come over there. And then the rope goes down. And it goes around one wheel on a pulley. Right? That's all. It just goes around one wheel. And then it goes back up again, and it goes around a wheel on another pulley, and then it comes back down, and it goes around another wheel on a pulley, and it goes up, and it goes around another wheel on a pulley, and then you can haul on the rope. And because you've sort of doubled it over and doubled it over, you need to apply less pressure on the rope in order to be able to haul that thing out. It's, it's essentially how it works. And it works really well. Right, trust me on this. I've done this several times. Not with just picking these, but with, with moving stuff around using a pulley system like that. It, and it's a really powerful pulley system and it does really work well. Um, so we used that, slung it over a beam, and then we were able to drag the bags over and then 
one person on the rope and then two people on the bag and we essentially just kind of like got our shoulders behind the bag once it was pulled off the trailer and swinging up here it, this was actually taller by the way this this, this was high uh, it would have been more like this one well not as high as this one but you, you so you had more room to sort of swing it over and it was a big rope it was a, it was a substantial rope it wasn't like a little bit of string that was going to break so there's no danger of that so hold it off and then we had two of us behind the bag like shoulder me with a shoulder on this side the other person with a shoulder on this side and we pushed with all our might and and pushed the bag forward over to here while the person on the pulley is slowly letting it out so that we can let it down onto the ground and um, the further over you get, the more angle you've got on the rope. Basically, the more weight you're taking on that bag, it gets heavy. So you kind of like, you, you swing it a little bit here and just get a bit of momentum going. And then you run and you, rawr, and you run right up to it and you really go for it and get the bag over as far as you can with the bloke on the, on the pulley is letting that rope out quickly, but not so fast that it, it damages anything. Not so fast that it hits the ground before we're ready for it. And then when we get right out here and we're slowing down, we're slowing down, he's got to let that rope go quick. Because if he doesn't, it's just going to push us back and it's going to end up back over there. Um, it's fun. It's fun. Don't get me wrong. It, it is fun, right? It, it, it might sound like a, a ridiculous amount of work, but it's still, it was fun to do. I, I enjoyed doing that. It must be said. Now then, anyway, I was uh, doing something here, wasn't I? Um, so you, we want to put that one there. I actually want to move it over to... Right, it's, that's on the trailer. No, it's not. That's on the left-hand side. I can't... I, oh, I can just see it there. I can see the back end of it over there. It's a little bit unfortunate because I can't see how far back under it goes. But I think it's actually all right. So I need to reverse back. Because I can't see where it's unloading to, we're, we're going to have to sort of do this by guesswork a bit. But, yeah, that's fine. And then we can stick the other bit in the front when we come back through. That'll work. Now, I'm down to 1,800, which means I'm not going to have enough money to buy two bags of seed. Is our next problem. Um, I've also only got 157 litres of oats left. I've got... Actually, how much is seed? Like, if... We just go with the basic big bag pallet right here. It's 900 for seed there. So, the big bags here, which are a bit cheaper, it's 800. I think I did have a lot that was slightly cheaper as well. Uh, that's not seed granulated. Seeds, there's 780. That's pretty good. I thought I had... Do you got 8,000 litres there for 1,200. And this one's 2,700 for 4,000 litres. So that's actually um, a balanced amount. I thought there was one that was... It kind of like put it in an unbalanced amount but it doesn't so uh, that's 910 for 500 litres oh it's fertilizer that's why uh doesn't seem to be any better options for seed so it's, it's 780 this one over here i think it is 780 that's going to be 1600 if we get two I don't want eight. Two. 1,560. Ooh. That leaves me with 228 euros. That tractor over there has got 85 litres of seed left in it. He has gotten up this far. We may not need to sell the eggs. This was the, the, the thing, was that I kind of want to avoid selling these eggs. So I'm going to drive on up. We got 200 euros. If I can wait until the morning before I run the eggs up to sell them, we essentially, we get uh, a, not masses more money, but we do get more money than we get if we just sell them like this, which is what I want to do. So we will race on up this way. Uh, ignore the fact that we almost plowed into that car. The seed drill has got 60 litres of seed left. This tractor is... There's a saying we have around here. And that saying is, it couldn't pull granny off a pot. 
Now, I, I don't know if you, you, you know what that means. It is basically the, um, when, uh, years ago, if you were uh, caught short in the night, you had a, a bed, bed pot, a chamber pot underneath your bed and you would take that one out and you would use that one to relieve yourself because um the toilet would have been outside it, it, and not necessarily very comfortable to go out to to go and get so the, the chamber pot was is quite a useful thing so um there we go uh some for some reason the expression turned into you couldn't pull granny off a pot or off the pot I think it's off the pot. You you can't. You, it it wouldn't pull Granny off the pot or off a pot. You know, I genuinely don't know if it's a pot or the pot. But that's the that's the expression, right? And that's where it comes from. Is it's referring to a chamber pot, um, and we're saying that this tractor is so weak and feeble that it couldn't even pull Granny off the pot or off 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 a pot. I'm, I'm sure it's a pot. I. This is going to bug me now, because I'm not sure if it's one or the other, and it's, it's just going to irritate me. Do you ever get that, where you just get this thing in your head, it's like, I really want to know this, but I don't actually know what it is. I'm not sure if I'm saying it right. If anybody does know, like, uh, it, maybe this expression does go a little bit further than just my local region here. But, um, yeah, I think it does apply to this tractor. This tractor could not pull Granny off a pot. I think it's a pot, I'm sure it is. But yeah, it couldn't pull Granny off a pot. That's what this tractor is. Um, it's it's just not very good at the moment, and we desperately need to spend that seven thousand euros to just boost it up a little tiny bit. We've got six liters of seed left in the seed drill, which is rather fortunate that we are on our way over. Let's not do that. I wanted to spin round in style like this there we go that's what i want to do spin around like that so that i could then jump down um all right you know what i'm gonna do i'm gonna go over here and i'm gonna open that gate there tractor's gonna drive in like this there we go and jump down again and then we'll go over here and we'll close that gate and we will whiz across the field like this probably shouldn't be driving on that bit because we've yet to plant that bit so we'll drive on this bit that's already been planted i mean ideally you wouldn't be doing either the person in the tractor would be coming over to us is, is what they would do that's 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 how they would actually be doing it but um well we're, we're going to ignore that and we're not going to do it properly so i jump in here and apparently it won't allow me to lift it up and down um when the tractor is not running unless you're just climbing into the tractor right watch this there i'm trying to lower it please start the engine first are you kidding me right so i lower it down it's getting this boogie on now and i'll jump out why it's getting this boogie on if i jump in no it's not going to do that unhitch hitch it back on and even though the engine's not running it still picks it up weird right it's not just me is it that is actually weird yeah i'm hoping it's not just me right so there's 1000 liters there is the rest of the liters and we've now got 1308 liters of seed on board we're going to why aren't you closing oh it's not closing because n opens the door what closes the door? J closes the door. Hmm. Uh, I don't think there's anything I can do about that. I'm just going to let the hired help carry on. I'm hoping that once it goes out past the sea drill... It, there we go. It closes automatically. Um, once it goes out of range of the bag, then it just sort of decides, oh, well, actually, no, we, we can't load any more. We, we'll, we'll call it quits. So I've got 620 litres of seed in here. And that is all of the seed that we have, apart from the 1,300 that we've got over in the actual seed drill that is being used right now. The other seed drill is empty. Not going to be enough to do our next season of planting, but it will be enough just to keep us going for now. Um, and then after that, we can sort of see how we get on. I'm... 
at some point, I would really like to be able to upgrade our sea drill to something bigger. Um, so that we can sort of do those jobs a little bit faster. I'm not anymore in any particular hurry to go and do, like, to go and get any more land. Um, because the, the land part of this series is a bit that takes a really long time. It's also the dull bit. I feel that we, we have more action going on with things with the rest of what we've got. It, well, more variety with it at least anyway. Now, let's bring you back around here. Um, as last time I was recording, whether or not you wanted, like, how much you wanted me to do in this series, what you wanted to see from it, and also whether or not you wanted me to kind of wrap things up here in order to be able to do something in Silver Run Forest instead, the new one, the new map that's come out with the DLC. So, I will wait for responses on that one. I've no idea what people are going to say on there, to be honest. Um... You know, I've said before, a lot of the time I can usually predict what people are going to say. This time I have no clue. Not the foggiest. Now, with only 70 euros left, hired help doesn't have a lot of room. He's going he's gonna to give up pretty soon. I'm just coming down here to check on how these are doing. We've got 266 litres of soybeans in there. We have got, over this side, 499 wheat. The... Oat and that has only just changed over to, it has only just gone up to the mill and it's already ground it up. So basically the mill is grinding up that bit pretty much instantly with the two lots of 24 that we've got here. So if I want to save a bit of money, if I deactivate both of these and we can just allow the flour to accumulate a little bit for you know, like a, a, maybe a month or two and then we can let it start grinding again because it seems a bit of a waste. Oh, actually, how much is the pig food thing costing us as well? That's another 24, so I'll deactivate that one as well. And I can also just kind of stay. So we don't need that one draining us. The I know it's only like 72 euros a month, which is really not very much, but it's still 72 euros a month, right? It's still money that is being drained out of the system. Let's go running along here. And here we go. Wow, we really don't have very much left. As soon as this is done, I don't think there's anything else that we're going to need to do this month. We've got food and... Well, the chickens don't need water. That's automatically piped into them. The pigs, I believe, have actually got plenty of water at the moment. Let's have a look. Uh, here. And here. Pigs. Water is full. Okay, so we've got plenty of water in for the pigs. We have got water in for everything else. Everything is topped up. There's nothing, no more work that we need to do. So that means as soon as this job is finished, we can fast forward until next month. And then at the beginning of the day, clearly we're not going to have the money to be able to go and buy our next round of pigs. What we will do, though, is we will load up any eggs that we've got. We'll take them up and sell them. Because the egg price at the moment is starting to climb. 970. And the May price jumped right up here. So I'm hoping that this year it will also climb up as well. And we we'll get a decent price. So we're on 970 at the moment. I'm hoping it will hit maybe 1200. And we have run out of money. So I've got to go and do this last little bit myself. Right there. Here we go. And we've got, I see, a little bit that we missed right there. So I will also go and just tidy that bit up. And then, and then I guess we can take a look down the bottom in a bit and just see if there's anything that we've missed down there. Be or not. Uh, oh, there's a bit that I've missed there by the look of it. Just under the wheels, right here. That's where it is. But no, there was another thing I was going to look at was uh, food. I do have room for the food, so I could, before the end of the month... Oh, you know it would probably help if I turned the sea drill on. For this little bit. Because I'm, yeah, I, I was pressing the wrong button on there somewhere. Not sure what I was doing, but anyway. Um, if 
I'm taking eggs to sell. I could toss the eggs into the um, high-sided trailer. And then we can run up and we can get the rest of the pig food from the mill. Or at least get some of the pig food that's up there. There's still a little bit more that still needs to be made. And... Um, well, well, we'll get that down eventually, but at the moment, we're not going to need any more. Like, we, we don't want to be using it up. However, I'm also questioning whether or not that's a sensible thing to go and do. Because if I'm going to change over a and have a different pigsty so that we can start getting some dung to go into the garden and the greenhouse and increase the production that we're getting there, I don't want to put any more food into the current pig pen because I want to use that food up and there's no way once you put food into a pen to take it out at least not within the game um, limits so I mean I could all what I could do is I could just um, give us some extra money and then buy from the shop the crates of pig food for it that'd be one way to go around it or I could instead do something like um, just take the number for the amount of pig food that we've got in the pen and then uh, once we've got the new pen built I'm going to do this in two sections, two slices uh, once we've got the new pen built if I was to then go and just edit the file and alter the amount of food that's available in a new pen to reflect what was left over in the old one that would also be another way of doing it so i mean we, we've kind of got like a couple of options there but i'm thinking that well actually it'd just be better if we just use up the food that we've got because it's going to be a while before we got the 50 grand that we need in order to change everything over and then we have the other thing that we've got to decide do we buy a transport trailer do we buy an animal transport trailer in order to move all the pigs that we own from one pen to another. Now, if I do that, that means i got to build the new pen in a different location to what the current pen is. Or, we just sell off all the pigs and we start over buying more pigs every month until we've built back up again. Um, kind of feel like we'd have to do one or the other. I, I don't think that anything else would really work. Right, that's finished. Let's drive down around here and make sure that we've gotten all the little triangle bits that it does sometimes leave behind. It's a lot better now, admittedly. Like, the game in general, the hired help is an awful lot better at not leaving triangle bits, he says, as he sees a triangle bit right there. Okay, so occasionally it leaves a triangle bit, but generally it's actually pretty good. Like, it's got to be said. Credit where it's due. I know it's... You know, that there's an awful lot of videos out there that do bash giants for what they've done, mistakes they've made, and so on and so forth. And yes, they've made mistakes. They've done things that they probably shouldn't have done. Um, and they've done things that do annoy us. And, and there's things that annoy me an awful lot. And I'm not shy about saying that. But credit where it's due, they still have made a pretty spectacular game. And... They've done a lot of work over the years with slowly improving the AI and making it work better. And yes, I know we would all like to see certain things with the AI in this game, like it being able to uh, drive around the outside edge of the fields properly, like we can get from some mods that come along. Like There are mods that actually allow us to do that, drive around the edge of the field. However, those mods are not always perfect. They do cause problems. Um, there are issues with them and I would rather Giants kept it simple and made sure that it worked rather than try to go for something more complex and have it not work properly that's what I that's what I would prefer so we do have that but there is also that they've added in extra bits there's extra functionality I just don't use it you can have hired help ferrying stuff from one point to the other we've now got the job map that we can use so it's this one here and you can actually set up a ferrying route you can tell the worker to go from here and gather grain and take it to this point and and you know tip the grain and that's not something that we've ever had before and i know that there are plenty of other people that do rely on that service quite heavily and it does work i there's no question it definitely does work and it works quite well so 
Giants have made some leaps and bounds with their um, AI that they've got with the, the hired help. And yeah, I know there are still problems with it. I'm not trying to suggest that there are no problems with it. There are. There's definitely problems with it. But they're not as bad. It Like, I don't feel that it's as bad as some people make it out to be. Some, some people seem to have a bit of a chip on their shoulder about... I think that... I mean, yeah. There are some major issues that Giants have got. And there's... I, I do feel that they've done some things very, very wrong. And they could have done them an awful lot better than they have. Um, but... Sometimes I feel that some of the complaints that are leveled against Giants for what they've done and what they produced, the complaints are more based on what that particular person, what that particular player wants from the game as a, and expects from the game, um, as opposed to something that Giants have done actually wrong. And I, I do feel that that sort of seems to be the case sometimes. It's like, well, we should have this by now. We should have, we should be able to do this because mods can do this. The mods don't work perfectly. The mods cause a lot of problems. Um, and yes, it takes a considerable amount of know-how at times to make the mods work well. So giants are then, if they was to produce something like that, everybody would be complaining that it's just buggy and it doesn't work properly. So you, you've got to sort of... I kind of, I try to look at their point of view as well as our point of view. Like, yeah, it'd be great to go and have all these extra things. But I do feel sometimes the complaints leveled at them are a little bit unfair at times. Because the the complaints appear to be, I thought this should be in the game by now, and it's not, and this is wrong. And I don't think that's fair, because coding AI is a ridiculously difficult thing to do. And it's ridiculously difficult to do it well. So coding the AI to go way above and beyond what the AI currently does in this game is really tough. Um, the mods that do alter the AI behavior all have problems. People say, oh, course play should be in the base game. Course play is buggy. Course play causes all kinds of problems. I've watched people using course play and yes, it can do good things. But at the same time, course play also causes a massive amount of headaches. It does all kinds of things. You've got to watch it. Your machines go in places they shouldn't be going. You, you have machines tipping over and doing all kinds of things well beyond what the base game does to stuff. And yes, I'm always complaining about the hired help doing things wrong. I am. And I feel I have the right to complain about hired help doing things wrong because they do things wrong. But if we were trying to use a built-in version of course play into the game or the AI vehicle extension, which was my favorite one. Where... Unfortunately, folks, that is all we have got time for today. A massive thank you to everybody who has earned their way into the Great Book of Names. To find out some more details about all the names coming past, please head into the description and click on the link to the Discord. It's a link to another video. The link is on the other video. Uh, please also consider checking out the links there for Nitrado, who provide gaming servers for games like Farming Simulator, Minecraft, Ark, and several others. And there's also Fanatical, who will help support your gaming habit by providing you with cheap games and also giving me a small commission on anything that you buy using my link. Uh, if you've enjoyed this particular video, then please head down below and give us a like. And if you really enjoyed it, then please tell your friends all about me. Get them to come and watch as well. That would be awesome. And until next time, thank you very much for watching. This is Frithgar. Goodbye, and see you later.